All right, it's time for some bonus problems. We're gonna start by looking at number eight in the textbook. So number eight says, find all solutions exactly on the interval zero to two pi. So exactly on the interval zero to two pi. And number eight specifically is tangent of theta equals negative one. So for sine and cosine, this one required the unit circle. This was a quadrantal angle. But for tangent, remember that tangent is equal to 1 at pi over 4. So this is going to have a reference angle of pi over 4. And we need to look at what two quadrants tangent is negative in. First and third. This is going to be true. Sorry. Second and fourth. This is going to be true with a reference angle of pi over 4 in the first, second quadrant. That's 3 pi over 4. And a reference angle of pi over 4 in the fourth quadrant. 7 pi over 4. These are two answers, and you can check with Desmos. There we go. Let's look at number 12 next. Number 12. Oh, is it the same thing? Yep, it's the same thing. Find all exact solutions. Cosecant squared minus 4. So if you want, you can use a substitution here. Um, let's do it. Why not? Let's let y equal cosecant of x. This becomes y squared minus 4 equals 0. How do we solve this quadratic equation? Technically, quadratic formula would work. But since there's no linear term, there's no single y, we can just add 4 to both sides and take the square root. When you take the square root of both sides, though, don't forget your plus or minus. y is plus or minus 2. So y is cosecant. So this is going to give us that cosecant of x is equal to positive 2, or cosecant of x is equal to negative 2, plus or minus. We have to solve both these equations. Now, if you're a whiz at cosecant, power to you. I'm going to change things into sines. If the reciprocal of sine is equal to 2, that means that sine is equal to the reciprocal of 2. You could cross multiply. There's a couple of ways of seeing this. And similarly, this other equation becomes sine becomes negative one half. We can solve these. When is sine equal to positive a half or negative a half? Well, sine's one half with a reference angle of pi over six. And since it doesn't matter whether it's positive or negative, right? We have positive here, we have negative here. We're looking at a reference of pi over 6 in all four quadrants because we don't care whether it's positive a half or negative a half. We're going to have four answers here. Reference angle of pi over 6 in the first quadrant. Reference angle of pi over 6 in the second quadrant. Reference angle of pi over 6 in the third quadrant. A reference angle of pi over 6 in the fourth quadrant. These are our answers. So x is equal to pi over 6, 5 pi over 6, 7 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6. Do number 42. I did a bunch of quadratics earlier, so I'm not going to do any quadratics, I think, in this video. Solve exactly on 0 to 2 pi, <laughs> and then use a quadratic formula if it doesn't factor. All right. Sine squared of x plus sine of x minus 2 equals 0. I think this one does factor. All right, we need two numbers. That multiply to negative 2, to add to that middle number, 
that middle coefficient of one. I'm just seeing whether it can factor. You can start with a substitution too. I'm not gonna substitute this time unless it, I'll substitute if it doesn't factor. But positive two and negative one work out. So this does factor. And the leading coefficient is one right here. So it makes things a lot easier. Becomes sine of x plus two sine of x minus 1. Again, feel free to use a substitution. Foil this out. Should get what we have above. So this is going to be true when sine of x is equal to negative 2 and when sine of x equals positive 1. What do we notice about this one? Sine is always between negative 1 and 1. This is, can never happen. No solution to this half. We only have to look at the right hand side. Reference triangle is not going to help us because sine's between negative one and one. When it's one, we're going to use the unit circle. Right? Sine is the y value on the unit circle. When is the y value equal to one? Right here at pi over two. Let's check our answer to this one in Desmos. We're looking at the equation y equals sine squared of x plus sine of x minus 2, I believe. And we're curious, when is this equal to 0? In the interval from 0 to 2 pi. Only right here at pi over 2. Let's do number 64 next. All right, it's a big one. Find exact solutions and look for identities. 64 says tangent of x is equal to 3 sine of x. So this is a bit weird here. Um, we have different functions. We want only one trig function here. All right. So let's get everything on the same side. Let's subtract out tangent of x. Take 3 sine of x minus tangent of x equals 0. Let's put everything in terms of sine. It's going to be 3 sine of x minus the sine of x over cosine of x. We can factor this. And if we factor, right, if we, if we factor and have something set equal to zero, the solution is just when each piece equals zero. So what do they both have in common? They both have a sine of, of x in common. We're left with three minus secant of x or one over cosine of x, your choice. So once we fully factor like this, now we just set each piece equal to zero and see what we get. So sine of x equals zero, that's half of our answer. Three minus secant of x equals zero is our other half. Start with the easier one. <laughs> sine of x, again, sine of x is the y-coordinate on the unit circle. When is the y-coordinate equal to zero? Right here, at 0 and pi. The other one's a little bit more involved. Let's add 1 over cosine of x to both sides. I'm going to say when is 3 equal to 1 over cosine of x? When is the reciprocal of cosine equal to 3? That's when cosine is the reciprocal of 3. You can cross multiply to get here. This one can't be done exactly. Okay? We're going to have to use inverse cosine. There's going to be two answers on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. One answer is 
x equals the inverse cosine. And again, I believe the book does exact answers for these ones, but if there's no exact answer here, just um, you can approximate here. Inverse cosine of one third, use Desmos as a calculator. Inverse cosine of one third is about 1.2310. Or again, these ones are usually a little easier to do in degrees. So let's, let's convert this to degrees. 70, 52, 88. That is one of our answers, 70 degrees. That's when cosine is positive a third. What other quadrant is cosine positive in? It's about 70.5 degrees. Well, the other quadrant that cosine is positive in is the fourth quadrant. So that'll be 360 degrees minus at 70.5288. Those are going to be our four answers. So zero, pi, 70.5288. And the last one, just 360 minus this angle, 289, 47, 12. Technically, these are approximations. And we can check our answer with a graphing calculator or Desmos, right? This is when is tangent of x equal to 3 sine of x? When is tangent of x? equal to 3 sine of x at about 1.23. Oh, this is kind of weird that we're answering in degrees and radians, actually. I don't like this. Let's either answer in degrees or answer in radians. I wouldn't, not, I wouldn't dock you points for this, but I'd look at you kind of funny. So uh, either use degrees or radians. We already have these other ones written down. Actually, I think it's probably easiest to just 0 degrees, 180 degrees, like so. So we got 0 and pi for checking our answers. Yep, 0 is right here. Pi is right there. And then we also had 1.23 radians. Good, 1.23 radians. And this other one should be 2 pi minus 1.23. You could check that this... Uh, this one checks out too. These are all the solutions where these graphs cross. Let's do number 90. Number 90 says, find all solutions exactly on the interval 0 to 2 pi. And I think actually for some of these, I told you, that you can approximate. I actually want to double check on this one before I do it. I want to make sure I'm doing it the way I told you. Yeah, on these ones, I say use a calculate, calculator or Desmos to quickly solve. So this one, when is the sine of 2x over 2 cosecant squared equal to 0? Sine of 2x divided by 2 cosecant squared of x, when is that equal to zero? Well, Desmos is going to be very nice. Zero, pi over two, pi. Oh, this is a nice answer. Zero, pi over two, pi, and three, pi over two. Great. All right, that's where we're going to be finished on this problem. Again, x equals zero, pi over two, pi, and three, pi over two. The reason why is a really nice identity that we didn't really talk about. Again, using Desmos. Last problem in this video, let's look at 104. 104 says, find a solution algebraically and a calculator to verify the results. Round the answer to the nearest tenth of a degree. A person does a handstand with their feet touching a wall. I got this. 
I got this picture. Ready for this? Handstand. With their, oh, with their feet touching a wall. Uh, okay. <sighs> Nothing to worry about. We got a really nice picture right here. Good, good, good. Uh, they're tilted pretty far. <laughs> Their hands are one and a half feet away from the wall. Uh, we'll just average the hands. One and a half feet. Oh yeah, because because their their hand right, it's going to be parallel, but you can't draw the picture that way, or perpendicular, right? The person six feet tall. And let's assume they're straighter than this. So this is six feet. Wait, but just because you're six feet doesn't mean you're going to be six feet when you're doing a handstand. All right, this problem is officially one of those silly math problems. Let's say, let's say they're six feet when they're doing this. <laughs> or we can approximate the length of their arms. This is pretty silly. Come on, textbook. I'm, I'm gonna. I think next time I teach this class, I might change this. I might add some more interesting problems. This is silly. It wants you to assume this. They're six feet with their arms, or maybe you could approximate the length of their arms. Either way. <sighs> what angle do their feet? Oh. This is a little different than we've done before. What angle do their feet make with the wall? That's what we're curious about. So we're relating an angle with its opposite and the hypotenuse. That's going to be sine. Sine of theta is 1.5 over 6. The theta is going to be the inverse sine. That actually simplifies down to 1 fourth. And rounded to the nearest tenth of the degree, inverse sine of one fourth. Convert it to degrees. Fourteen point five degrees. Okay, and there we go. That's what it wants. Just use a calculator to verify the result, but you need to use a calculator to to do it in the first place. Again, these are one of the downsides to a free textbook. You know, there are fewer resources to go into making a free textbook than there are for paid textbooks, but this is what the problem is wanting you to do. I'm judging the book though, but it's okay. It's free. That's awesome. And people like us, we can help them make it better by sending feedback and stuff like that, which I do pretty regularly. So OpenStax is awesome. I don't want to get angry at it too hard because it's really nice to not have to buy a $200 book. All right. Anyway, have a great day. Let me know if you have questions, please, especially on some of the, some of these, all of these, especially on everything. Goodbye.